You may be seated. Welcome to Washburn University and the 114th graduation ceremony of the Washburn University School of Law. I am Joseph Master Simone, the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at the Law School, and I'd like to introduce the members of the platform party. Beginning on my immediate right, they are Dr. Julianne Nazicek, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Washburn University. Jay Lou Lowry, Law School alumna and Associate Dean for Student Affairs at the Law School. Lucky DeFries, Law School alumnus, Chair of the Washburn University School of Law Alumni Association. Bill Seed, Law School alumnus and Board of Regents member. Jennifer Sork, Law School alumna and Board of Regents member. Blanche Parks, Board of Regents member. Terry Beck, Law School alumnus and Board of Regents member. Paul Hoferer, Law School alumnus, Chair of the Washburn University Board of Regents and President of the Washburn University Law School Foundation. Terry Wilford Wood, Law School alumna, honorary degree recipient, and our speaker this evening. And Carla Pratt, Dean of the Law School. Greetings. It's wonderful to see you all together. The class of 2019, as you gather together at the start of a great journey. In many ways, today is not unlike that day three years ago when you gathered at the law school as the incoming class of 2019. And that the start of a great journey at that time, which was law school itself. And like that day, you're joined by the law school faculty, staff, and administration. And like that day, there are many people in your lives who have helped you to get to this point. While this is certainly your day to celebrate, it's also a time to thank all of those who helped you along the way, because each of you owes much to friends, family, spouses, children, and significant others. In many ways, law school can be just as challenging for them as it was for you. Uh, sure, they did not have to endure Professor Bahador's torts class, right? uh, Professor Kincannon's evidence exam, uh, or even the so-called work, the, the so-called extra work that I give in legal writing. But, but they did have to endure the endless stories of law school, the needless use of Latin phrases, and the so ever so popular game of that's a tort. So on behalf of the class of 2019 and the entire law school community, thank you. Right, thank you for helping them achieve this great accomplishment, and frankly, thank you for putting up with them for the past three years. Without you, and no small measure of their hard work and dedication, they would not be here today, on the verge of entering an honored profession needed now more than ever. For soon, once the class of 2019 clears the final hurdle, the bar exam, they will be ready to serve their communities with the skills that they have acquired in law school. And the world needs those skills. The world needs your ability to analyze problems, longs for your ability to argue passionately but professionally, will rely on your ability to apply reason to resolve problems, and hungers for your dedication to truth, fairness, and justice. In short, you represent the antidote for much that ails our society. You are entering a world full of problems, but you're entering that world as trained problem solvers. I know that I speak for the entire Washburn Law community when I say that we're all very proud of what you have accomplished and what you will accomplish. Use your knowledge, skills, and professionalism, and use what you have learned in law school to be a force for good in all that you do. Congratulations. I would like to now introduce to you the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Jalen Lowry. Congratulations, class of 2019. <laughs> Family and friends, among the graduates here tonight, one was chosen by them to lead. The student body elected Mr. Jake Miller as president of the Washburn Student Bar Association. And I and the rest of the administration 
have thoroughly enjoyed working with him. Mr. Miller had a long history of leadership at the school before being elected to this position. He served as a rep at large his very first semester here as a J section student and continued to serve throughout his time here. He has also been a two member of the negotiations team, was a member of the Georgia project and worked this year as a judicial extern for federal judge Dan Crabtree. Mr. Miller has done a great job of taking on the tough, tedious, and time-consuming tasks of a president, all the time maintaining a great attitude and a wonderful sense of humor. Graduates and your family and friends, please join me in welcoming WSBA President Jake Miller. President Miller, I am proud to present to you, on behalf of the members of your graduating class, this gavel, given as a token of their esteem and appreciation for your dedicated work on their behalf. Thank you, Dean Lowry, uh, especially for making me sound like I made some accomplishments in law school. My parents were actually worrying back there. So. <laughs> Good evening, deans, professors, graduates, family and friends. I'm truly honored to stand before you today and represent one of the most exciting classes to ever walk the halls of Washburn Law. As you will notice, some members of this class are wearing red, white, and blue cords to signify that they are veterans. If the veterans in this class and the veterans anywhere in the auditorium rise, if you are able. I and everyone in this room would like to thank you for your service to this country. I know my classmates would agree that we couldn't and didn't take this journey alone. Along the way, many of you and others helped us get to where we are today. We owe a huge thank you because we truly couldn't walk across this stage tonight without all of you. First, I would like to thank the Washburn Law Administration, faculty, and staff. I consider Washburn Law a family which is led by those who come here each and every day. This year, we welcomed a new dean to lead that family. Dean Pratt, um, it was truly an honor to get to know you and work with you through this year. I'm excited that we get to be the first class to graduate with you as dean. And Dean Pratt, I know you already know this, but you were surrounded by some of the best people. Through the years, the administration and faculty has worked tirelessly for our class, making sure that we had everything we needed to succeed. Whether it's giving us tips or picking us up when we are down, all of you were always there. For instance, when we left a class feeling as if we weren't adequate enough to be in law school, Dean Lowry's door was always open with a shoulder to cry on and a pick-me-up speech to keep us going. I specifically would like to thank the staff at Washburn Law. You made our time here at Washburn one to remember and will continue on after we leave shaping the lawyers to come. Next though, and the biggest thank you, has to go to our family and friends in this room. You all supported us along this way. You dealt with our late nights, our stress during finals week, and even acted interested when we left tort jokes. You also listened to us complain about law school problems, and we all know those aren't actually serious. Though to those of you not related to us on journal, you didn't have to endure law journal problems, which is much worse. Finally, I would like to thank my fellow classmates. We wouldn't have made it to this day without each other. 
Along the way, we have made countless memories and lifelong friends that will always connect us. We may not always remember our constant complaints of a parking problem, which was a nice excuse when I was late, or the endless amounts of Glory Days pizza that we ate at Lunch and Learns. We will, though, remember that Audrey Kaler had to deal with Jeremy getting up at 4.50 in the morning every day to get in line for office hours. <laughs> or Ian Sharma Crawford walking around the school draped in a Lilo and Stitch blanket and eating dried mangoes. Hopefully, everyone remembers the ice machine that Megan Booker was so determined to get. <laughs> or the countless memories we made with professors through the many events we held together, like Super Bowl parties, laser tag, mortar, murder mystery parties, or the annual basketball game. While the events were for charitable purposes, the students and profess professors maintained a competitive spirit. I'll certainly always remember getting a triple-double while Professor Jackson guarded me. <laughs> Our time here at Washburn may be over as students, but we leave here today as proud alum. Many alumni influenced us during our time here, and we are now a part of that great group. Remember that as we grow in this profession, to not forget where we came from and to continue to make the Washburn Law family proud. I'm excited to graduate with you all and look forward to hearing about everyone's future successes. And now, it is my honor to present the William O. Douglas Professor of the Year and Adjunct of the Year Awards. These awards are voted on by the graduating class and give us the opportunity to recognize the outstanding instructors who have challenged and inspired us throughout our law school experience. This year's recipient of the William O. Douglas Professor of the Year Award is Professor Jeffrey Jackson. <laughs> Professor Jackson received his JD from Washburn and an LLM degree in constitutional law from Georgetown. Before teaching, he clerked for Justice Davis at the Kansas Supreme Court, for Judge Briscoe at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit, and was an associate at Bennett and Dillon in Topeka. Professor Jackson is the director of the Center for Excellence in Advocacy and teaches constitutional law, constitutional history, legal history, and legal analysis research and writing. On behalf of the class of 2019, Professor Jackson, Congratulations. The recipient of the Adjunct Professor of the Year Award is Professor Joseph Schrimmer. Professor Schrimmer is from the law firm of Depew, Gillen, Rathburn, and McIntyre in Wichita. Professor Schrimmer has an MBA as well as a JD and is the president of the oil and gas Miner and mineral section of the Kansas Bar Association. He is the Kansas, he is the co-author of the oil, gas, and mineral law chapter of the KBA's annual survey of law and the American Bar Association's annual update on oil and gas exploration and developmental law. Professor Schwimmer teaches environmental regulation of the oil and gas industry. Professor Schwimmer, on the behalf of the class of 2019, I thank you. And I will now turn things back over to Dean Maestro Simone. Thank you, Jake. 
Speaking on behalf of the Washburn University School of Law Alumni Association is graduate and chair of the Alumni Association Board of Governors, Lucky DeFries. Well, first of all, on behalf of the Washburn University School of Law Alumni Association, let me offer hearty congratulations to all of you members of the graduating class of 2019. In broadcasting, you sometimes hear that less is more, so please forgive me if I keep my remarks brief. I'm sensitive to the fact that these remarks are some of the few things that are standing between you and these diplomas right over here. Our legal writing program has consistently been ranked as one of the top uh, programs in the country, and I suspect that one of the things they teach is how to be concise. I'll let you be the judge as to whether these remarks would have received a passing grade from that program. As you walk across the stage and accept your diploma, you're joining a very elite group of women and men that can lay claim to a degree from the Washburn University School of Law. I view my degree from this law school as a very special gift and one that neither I nor you can fully appreciate when first received. With some gifts, you can tell the extent of what you received immediately, not so with the gift you're receiving this evening. You do know some things about your gift, as we gathered. You know that you've been blessed by the collective wisdom of an extraordinary faculty, helped and nurtured by the administration and staff of the law school, and I hope you've sensed the support from the administration of the university as a whole. And you know that members of our faculty, students, and our programs are consistently receiving a variety of awards and recognition. But as you move through your career, you will come to more fully appreciate the gift that you've received, the doors that have been opened, and the opportunities that have been provided to you. Over the years, people have frequently remarked about the fact that there's something special about the Washburn Law School experience. Now, trying to define that special something is not easy, but there is some tangible evidence. Our faculty and staff has tended to come and remain as part of the law fa family. I believe they sensed that there was something special here, and it's what has kept them here. And many more of our faculty and staff have come and stayed over the years. Indeed, two of the members of our faculty were here when I arrived and have continued to bless us with their presence, both Jim Kincannon and Linda Elrod. I hope that one of the things you come to appreciate is the value of giving back. There are countless ways to serve, but among them is an ongoing connection to the law school. Be an ambassador of the law school, recommend prospective students, and become active in the Alumni Association. If you encounter opportunities to give back, seize them, embrace them. It has been the willingness of our graduates to give back in so many ways that has helped to create the richness that has defined the Washburn Law School experience. And if you're interested in an even longer term perspective regarding the School of Law, we're delighted that three of our alumni from the class of 1969 are sharing part of their 50-year reunion with us here this evening. And I'd like to recognize these three alumni and ask them to join us up on the stage. First of all, we have Tom Adrian. Jack Bender, and Dick Durth. And let's give all three of them another round of applause. Tonight, our Law School Alumni Association, as you saw, has provided them with a bronze medallion bearing the Washburn seal. We hope that that will be a reminder of their time at the law school 
and that they now represent a tradition of excellence that has been established over more than 100 years. And now on behalf of the School of Law Alumni Association, let me extend our best wishes to all of you for a long and successful career. It's now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of our law school, Carla Pratt. Thank you, Lucky. I am very pleased to welcome you all to our 114th commencement ceremony for the Washburn University School of Law. I have some remarks that are prepared, but they're pretty much duplicative of everything that Dean Master Simone has said and um, what Lucky has said. And so I want to keep it short because I too am anxious to get to the good part, which is giving you your diploma. I just want to say congratulations to you, class. You are part of a long tradition of elite lawyers who graduated from this law school. Next week, we'll celebrate the 65th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka. This was a landmark US Supreme Court case that ended racial segregation in public school education. The case consisted of five consolidated cases, one of which was filed here in federal court in Topeka, Kansas. And those lawyers who filed that case were educated at Washburn University School of Law. So your law school has a long tradition of preparing lawyers to not only administer the law, but to work within the law to achieve justice for all. In a few minutes, you're going to become part of that great tradition. You will join this distinguished line of Washburn Law School graduates, and you will begin to add to the legacy and reputation of the law school. We have every confidence that you will serve our profession well. This evening, I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce to you this year's commencement speaker, Ms. Terry Wilford Wood. Ms. Wood received her BA degree from the University of Missouri, and she earned her Juris Doctorate degree from Washburn University School of Law. Ms. Wood started her career in private practice as an associate at Strook and Strook and Levon LLP in New York, and her hard work at this reputable New York City law firm catapulted her into a position as an administrative judge for the Federal Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in New York. There she heard cases involving individuals with claims of discrimination in the workplace. Her reputation as a jurist with a firm understanding of workplace law led her to join the employment law group at the Fortune 100 Company of American Express, where she served as managing counsel. And when her former boss recalled her exceptional work that she had done for him, he recruited her to accompany him on a move to another Fortune 100 company that you may have heard of, International Business Machines Corporation, better known as IBM. There, she spent more than two decades, serving most of that time as Chief Global Labor and Employment Counsel, advising on human resources-related legal matters involving over 300,000 employees worldwide. Recently, Ms. Wood returned to private practice, joining the firm of Jackson Lewis PC as of counsel in the firm's New York City office. And while most of us are very wowed by her professional accomplishments, I know from speaking with Ms. Wood that she's probably most proud of her loving and supportive family. She and her husband, John, are both Washburn Law School graduates. They have three adult children and two grandchildren, and we are so very pleased to welcome Ms. Wood back to Washburn University School of Law today. So please join me in welcoming to the podium one of our most distinguished graduates and your commencement speaker, Ms. Terry Wood. Thank you, Dean Pratt and all the deans and regents and marshals and professors and other officials of Washburn University School of Law here today. Thank you for inviting me here to share this milestone day and really in the honor of receiving a law degree together with the class of 2019. To each of the graduates here today and your families, Hearty congratulations. You have toiled and you have grown these past three years 
and for the many years leading up to law school. How proud your parents and families are to bear witness to all you've done to reach this day in this place. I know this feeling well from the day my own son graduated from law school. Well, in thinking about what I might share with you today as you complete your legal education and launch your life as a lawyer, I can't help but recall my early path after graduating from Washburn Law School. I've been fortunate to have the experiences of the legal challenges at the firms, corporations, and the federal agency mentioned by Dean Pratt. Each of these experiences was unique and contributed to my growth as a lawyer and practicing attorney. I'd like to share with you three lessons I've learned over the years that I hope will resonate with you now and in the future. So, lesson number one, have a plan, but watch for opportunities. Law school is a great place to explore and experiment with different areas of the law and different types of practice, or not. A law degree can be the foundation, training, and springboard for many other occupations outside the practice of law. But by the time you've headed into the home stretch of classwork and exams, you've likely developed a plan of direction and have now put it into action through placement interviews, internships, and summer associate experiences. And that's appropriate. That's good. That's commendable and as it should be. But what I want to share with you is that sometimes you should stop. You should look and listen. Watch for those unexpected opportunities that might draw you in a different direction altogether and make the biggest difference in your life as an attorney. This is the background story of my journey and adventures, adventures I never planned and never could have imagined. When I graduated from law school, I had been deeply influenced by the issues of my days in school. The Vietnam War, the Civil Rights Movement, the Feminist Movement, the Pentagon Papers, the Watergate burglary, the court cases, the press. I studied journalism and communications in college, and after, I even worked as a television news reporter at WDAF-TV in Kansas City. In law school, I kind of envisioned myself as a First Amendment or communications lawyer, and with my husband John, class of 77, we left for New York City in search of the best fit, preferably to work as legal counsel for a big city newspaper. Well, as it turns out, the big news outlets were staffed up, and I started my legal life with a Wall Street law firm as a litigation associate. My experience as a law school intern at the Kansas Attorney General's office certainly helped land that position, and I did learn much from the firm and hope that sooner or later I actually would be working on a juicy First Amendment case. But then the unexpected happened. I was offered a civil rights position as an administrative judge. The federal government's executive branch was reorganizing the agencies charged with enforcing our nation's still-fledgling discrimination laws. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Age Discrimination Act of 1967. The reorganization presented me with an opportunity to join the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or EOC, to preside over se federal sector hearings. Well, this was not my career plan at the time, but the possibility of being part of this rapidly evolving and meaningful area of law, combined with the public service component, was pretty compelling. I said yes, jumped on board, and never looked back. At EEOC, I developed an expertise that grew in scope and importance over time. I worked for chairs Eleanor Holmes Norton and Clarence Thomas. And then, by the early 1980s, large employers had realized the importance of workplace laws, especially discrimination, and were staffing their legal teams with attorneys experienced in discrimination law. 
and expertise that was by then mine. I joined American Express Company and then IBM Corporation. Over those years, my expertise in workplace law ballooned. I have participated in one of the largest corporate turnarounds in history, multi-billion dollar acquisitions, divestitures, and IPOs, including the sale of IBM's PC business to a Chinese company, pension plan redesign in countries on every continent, implementation of global compensation changes and class action litigation. I have never once regretted my surprise career in workplace law. Well, as for the New York City news outlets, I guess I did buy several news subscriptions to keep up with the news. But the very best part was reading with great pleasure the New York Times coverage of one of my reverse discrimination opinions during my tenure with the EEOC. Now that was a good day. So these have been my opportunities. But what does the world have in store for you? Each of you, the 2019 graduates. As you ponder, watch for this significant and imminent development. The fourth industrial revolution is upon us. We are seeing the merger of the digital and physical worlds. Think robotics artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, quantum computing, 5G technologies, 3D printing, and fully autonomous vehicles. Building the workforce of this future is a call to action around the world, including the World Economic Forum and Davos. This, the experts tell us, presents the most significant challenges and opportunities of our lifetime. We're about to see a profound transformation of the workplace as analytics and artificial intelligence change 100% of all jobs in all sectors over the next five to 10 years. This includes attorney and other legal jobs utilizing AI, analytics, and more. As with any significant change, opportunities will be created. My advice to you, this change is upon us. Embrace the change. Have a plan, but watch for opportunities. Number two, this is one of my favorite lessons, family first. So a legal career can be intense and demanding. Law school prepares you for that. It is natural to be affected by long hours, weekends, time deadlines. At those times, it's important to remember the priority of our families, our children and spouses, our parents, grandparents and siblings. Make time for those family moments. Work from home when needed. You are entering the workforce at a time of family and medical leave, that's FMLA, policies that are mandated by law. But often, they're also offered by employers as a competitive advantage. Many companies, firms, and other employers are now offering paid and unpaid leaves for the birth of a child for five to six months, 12 months and more for maternity or paternity leave needs. That means you guys take the time offered. Don't rush back to work. You benefit not only your family and yourself, but serve as a role model for others, visibly making family a priority. When I was earlier in my career, a wonderful opportunity to become a unit general counsel arose. At that time, we had three children, two already in and starting middle school. The youngest was just four and a half, maybe five years old. My husband was very supportive of this opportunity, but before I pursued the position further, I wanted to discuss this with the children. So I explained that it would mean a good deal of travel, probably two to three days per week to the company headquarters in Omaha. Our older two responded positively with encouragement. And they, 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 they said yes, yes, they, they supported taking this challenge. When I asked our youngest, he said, Mommy, 
If you do this, I will be very sad. Well, that was a clear message that the time was not right for this kind of opportunity. I removed my name from consideration. But things do have a way of turning out for the best. Several years later, I had the opportunity to take on a new, high-profile challenge outside of New York City and even closer to home. Here is the simple truth. To take care of your family means taking care of yourself first. Just as the airlines tell us, when helping your child with an oxygen mask during a flight, first tend to your own mask. Attorneys today face immense pressure, creating high levels of stress and anxiety. That can lead to substance abuse, depression, and other mental health concerns at higher rates than the average population. According to a recent American Bar Association study, nearly 44% of attorneys with alcohol use disorders say that problematic drinking began within the first 15 years of practicing law, which suggests that the early stages of legal career are often associated with a higher risk of developing an alcohol addiction. Many bar associations are dealing with this by offering or requiring programs for training, treatment, and support. In California, for example, newly admitted attorneys are required to complete training that includes one and a half hours on substance abuse and mental health issues. This requirement now extends to all licensed attorneys in the state. Many counseling and treatment options are available today. Take advantage of these options. And the lesson is, take care of yourself so that family can truly be your first priority. And then, lesson number three, have fun. I think maybe some of you already know about that. Some of the most stressful and high-stakes cases I've worked on in recent years involve senior executive and key technical talent non-compete agreement litigation. This litigation is especially ruthless among technology competitors where protection of trade secret and confidential information is at stake and a bona fide war for talent is waging. When a temporary restraining order or preliminary injunction is the relief sought, the courts add additional pressure in terms of time deadlines and adherence to often rigid legal standards. Amidst all this stress, I found you actually do have a choice in how to manage, not the situation, but your reaction to the situation. Be the happy warrior, not the stressed attorney. It's all in how you approach the matter. Instead of obsessing about deadlines and performance expectations, think about the bigger picture. The principle you are litigating and the challenge in figuring out the puzzle of how to best counter the arguments of your adversaries and support your client in the law. In short, have fun and laugh, and remember that in all litigation, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, although the best course is often to settle. As a mentor and general counsel once told me, every so often it's actually good to lose, both for the client and the attorney. It makes for a healthier perspective. So the way you think, not only as a legal scholar, but as an attorney with a positive outlook can sustain you throughout a legal career of many decades. I have been at this for more than four decades. My advice to you is to have fun. So now, coming to a close, there's just one more thing. And this is a question for you the class of 2019. What will you do with your plans and your opportunities? What will you do with the law degree you've worked so hard to earn and that you richly deserve? 
How will you use your gifts and sustain your families, your, yourselves, and the laws that bind our world? Whatever that is, I urge you to do so with care and caring, always building on your role as a trusted advisor and protector of our system of justice. Thank you all for the honor of sharing this day of commencement with each of you. Congratulations again to the class of 2019. Be it known <clears throat> that inasmuch as honorary degrees are awarded to men and women who, because of scholarly contributions, <clears throat> meritorious public service, or other noteworthy achievements, have come to universal high regard, the Board of Regents of Washburn University does therefore confer upon Terry Wolford Wood the degree of Doctor of Law with all the rights, privileges, and insignia pertaining thereto. In testimony whereof, this diploma is issued with the signatures of the President and the Chair of the Board of Regents and a seal of the University affixed at Topeka on the 11th day of May, 2019. Ms. Wood, for your leadership, your support of higher education, and your dedication to helping others, Washburn University honors you and itself by conferring upon you this honorary degree. In token thereof, I cause you to be vested with the Doctor of Law academic hood and grant you this diploma. Will the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree and the Master of Law degrees please rise? <laughs> Dean Pratt, Regent Hofer, I present you the candidates for the Juris Doctorate degree and the Master of Law degrees of the class of 2019. Regent Hofer, the candidates before you and in absentia have completed or are expected to complete all requirements for the Juris Doctor degree or the Master of Laws degree and have been recommended by the faculty of the law school. I am pleased to present them to you now for the conferring of their degrees. By virtue of the authority in me, by the Board of Regents of Washburn University of Topeka, Kansas, I hereby confer upon those who have completed the requirements the degree, Juris Doctorate of Masters of Laws with all honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. As a symbol of this great accomplishment, please move your tassel to the left side at this time. <laughs> Congratulations. Graduates, you'll now please come forward to receive your diplomas. Honor is announced at this ceremony or preliminary. Who is such a downer? <laughs> Thank you. 
Offman Alarani. Dong Ding. Elena Nadila. Tanner Joshua Asbury. Dylan George Avery. <laughs> David Andrew Marshall Bailey. Hayden Lynn Ballard. <laughs> Jessica Lynn Barranco. Cum laude. Rebecca Elizabeth Bergkamp, Dean's Honors. Cameron Scott Bernard, Cum Laude. Matthew Ryan Bengesser, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Madeline Laura Bjorklin, Dean's Honors. Mark Andrew Bolton. Scotty Travis Bowden, Dean's Honors. Megan Lauren Booker. Jacob Benton Cantwell, Dean's Honors. Dominic Daniel Kavikia, Dean's Honors. Aaron Joseph Cunningham.
Kilotha May Daniels. Kilotha May Daniels. <laughs> Timothy Joseph Damel, Dean's Honors. Madeline Jean Dickerson. Sydney Marie Dixon. Skyler James Farwell. <laughs> Ashley Elizabeth Frandon. <laughs> Nathan Michael Geffrey. John Michael Glayman. Jonathan Michael Goodyear, Dean's Honors. Aaron John Greenbaum, Dean's Honors. Gabriel Jordan Greenbaum, Dean's Honors. John Allen Griffin. Sarah Elizabeth Gunkel. Daniel Charles Hagedorn. Colin Thomas Halpin, summa cum laude. Amanda Jo Hamer. Jacob A. Hansen. Elizabeth Christina Harrison Duncan. Adam Paul Hoosier. Charles Michael Curls. (laughs) 
Audrey Dawn Kaler, magna cum laude. Jeremy Evan Kaler, summa cum laude. Isaac Paul LeBlanc. Stephen Neil Letourneau. Sierra Marie Logan. Will Machado, Dean's Honors. Nicholas Robert Maloney. Kelsey Allen Marsh. Daniel Patrick Martin, Jr. KT Marie McAfee. Kelly Marie McCurdy. <laughs> Keegan Marie McElroy. Clara Elizabeth Malero. <laughs> Jacob Daniel Miller. Melissa K. Miller. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Moon, Dean's Honors. Sarah Elizabeth Morrison. <laughs> Jeffrey J. Morrow. Jesse T. Nation, magna cum laude.
Angelo Roy Panas. Jeffrey Marshall Pike, cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Renee Plaschka. Blake Kennedy Porter, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Jacob James Provo. Jordan Jane, Jordan Lane Ray. Jared McNeil Rieger. Laura Elizabeth Riggs Johnson. <laughs> Mallory Blair Riley. Benjamin James Ryu. <laughs> Amy Marie Ross, Dean's Honors. Jennifer Helen Salva, magna cum laude. <laughs> Robert Stephen Schifferdecker. Brooke Nicole Schmidt, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Casey Renee Scott, Dean's Honors. Ronald Eugene Seidel, Jr. <laughs> Ian Michael Ramesh Sharma Crawford, Dean's Honors. Jason David Steele. <laughs> Marvin Tador.
Adam Osmi Tahir Kelly. Benjamin Michael Thomas, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Tiffany Rose Thomas, Dean's Honors. Elias Mark Underwood, Dean's Honors. Charles Michael Waddle, Dean's Honors. Cody Lynn Webster. Scott Robert Wenger, Dean's Honors. Kennedy Andrew Joseph White. Luke Jonathan Williams. Tyler Ward Winslow, cum laude. Isaac Wright, Dean's Honors. <laughs> Seth Michael Young. Graduates, would you please stand? The Juris Doctor degree represents more than 90 academic credit hours beyond a bachelor's degree. The LLM degree represents 24 academic credit hours of advanced study in law. We are proud to welcome 89 Juris Doctorate degree and 40 LLM degree graduates as new alumni to the School of Law and Washburn University. On behalf of Washburn University School of Law, I wish to thank you for participating in this commencement exercise.
Please join us in the Washburn Room of the Memorial Union for a reception. Platform party, honored guests, and members of the audience, please join me in recognizing these impressive individuals of the graduating class of 2019 for their accomplishments by offering them a round of applause. I now declare this convocation concluded.